In this video, we will consider a simple DC motor, electromagnetic induction, lenses law, and a simple AC generator. First, the electric motor. The motor is based on the application of the fact that when a current carrying conductor is put in a magnetic field, a force is produced. The DC motor works using the same principle. It consists of a, a rectangular coil mounted on an axle which can rotate between the poles of a magnet. The ends of the coil are connected to split rings called commutator. The function of the commutator is to reverse the direction of current flowing through the coil every time the coil just passes the vertical position during the revolution. Pressing against the commutator are carbon brushes. The brushes keep the coil connected to the external supply or battery. As current flows through the coil, the current moves from the positive terminal, travels through the coil and back to the negative terminal. If Fleming's left hand rule is applied, we find that there will be an upward force acting on the left side of the coil and a downward force acting on the right side. These forces form a couple which causes the coil to turn in a clockwise direction until it is vertical. In the vertical position, the coil will no longer be in contact with the external supply because of the movement of the commutator with it. However, because of the residual momentum or the inertia that the coil has, it is able to go past the vertical position until it becomes horizontal again. The commutator half change contact from one brush to the other. This reverses the current through the coil. The left side of the coil will now be on the right side, acted on by the downward force, while the right side of the coil will be on the left, now acted on by an upward force. This keeps the coil rotating clockwise. The turning effect of the coil is increased by 1. Using a stronger magnet, 2. Increasing the current, and 3. Increasing the number of turns of the coil. Electromagnetic induction. We have considered how a magnetic field is produced when current flows through a conductor. The reverse is also true. A magnetic field can be used to produce current. When a wire or conductor is moved across a magnetic field, a small EMF is generated in the wire. This phenomenon is referred to as electromagnetic induction. If the wire forms part of a complete circuit, the EMF makes current flow. The current that is produced is detected by a galvanometer. A galvanometer is an instrument that measures small electrical currents by the deflection of a moving pointer. The pointer moves to the left or right depending on current direction. The question then is, what causes the EMF to be produced? As the conductor moves through a field, it cuts through the magnetic field lines. The cutting of the field lines is what causes the EMF to be produced. The EMF produced depends on the following. How fast the conductor moves through the magnetic field. The faster it moves, the more EMF is induced. Because the cutting of the field lines by the conductor is what causes the EMF to be produced, it has to do it actively. It also depends on the strength of the magnets. The stronger the magnets, the many or more the field lines. It means the conductor can cut through more field lines and thus more EMF will be induced. It also depends on the length of the conductor. Increasing the length of the conductor increases the area within which the conductor can act to cut through the field lines. The length of the conductor can be increased by increasing the number of turns or looping it so many times. All these factors that affect the EMF produced is summed up in a law called Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction. It states, the size of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate at which magnetic field lines 
our cats. It is good to keep this in mind concerning the currents produced. One, moving the wire in the opposite direction will change the direction of the induced EMF and currents. Two, change the direction of the magnetic field would also change the direction of the induced EMF and current produced. And very importantly, no EMF or current is produced in the coil if the coil is not moving. If the coil is parallel to the field, no EMF is induced as well. Let's investigate this phenomenon using one a straight conductor and a magnet and two a coil and a magnet. The wire is held at rest between the poles of a magnet. The ends of the wire will be connected to a galvanometer. The wire will be moved in each of the six directions shown. It is only when it is moving in direction A upwards or direction B downwards that a deflection will be seen on the galvanometer, which will be an indication that EMF is induced or current is produced. The deflection on the galvanometer when the conductor is moved upwards will be opposite to the deflection shown when the conductor moves downwards. Now let's consider a coil and a bar magnet. The ends of the coil is connected to a galvanometer. The magnet is brought near or pushed into the coil. As the magnet is brought near to the coil, the magnetic field lines of the bar magnet cuts or interacts with the coil. This causes EMF to be induced and as a result, a deflection is seen on the galvanometer. Moving the magnet away from the coil in the opposite direction reverses the direction of the deflection on the galvanometer. There is no deflection when the magnet is not moving because in that instance, the field lines will not be cutting the conductor or coil. How then do we determine the direction of the currents produced? We can do so using Lenz's law. The law states that the direction of the induced current is such as to oppose the change producing it. In the illustration, the magnet approaches the coil, south pole first. According to Lenz's law, the induced current should flow in a direction that makes the coil behave like a magnet with the side facing the south pole becoming the south. The motion of the magnet will then be opposed since like poles repel. Once we know the side of the coil is the south, we can easily tell the direction of the current. When the magnet is withdrawn, the side of the coil that is close to the south pole becomes the north pole and attracts the south pole of the magnet in effect opposing the change that produced it, that is the moving away of the magnet, as Lenz's law states. The induced current will then be in the opposite direction to that when the magnet was approaching. For a straight conductor or wire, moving at right angles to a magnetic field, Fleming's right-hand rule can be used to determine the direction of the induced current. It states, hold the thumb and first two fingers of the right hand at right angles to each other, with the first finger pointing in the direction of the field and the thumb in the direction of motion of the wire. Then the second finger points in the direction of the induced current. Point to keep in mind is that Fleming's left hand rule is used to determine the direction of the force produced. Fleming's right hand rule is used to determine direction of induced current and is applied to generators. A simple AC generator. The generator works using the principle of electromagnetic induction. It consists of a rectangular coil between the poles of a permanent magnet. The ends of the coil are joined to two slip rings. Carbon brushes press against the slip rings. The slip rings are fixed to the coil and rotate with it. The brushes made of carbon rub against the slip rings and keep the coil connected to the outside part of the circuit. When the coil is rotated, it cuts magnetic field lines so an EMF is generated. So it's more like a force is applied to the coil to cause it to rotate. And because field lines are cut, it causes current to flow. 
In the horizontal position, the sides of the coil make the greatest contact with the field lines. One side cuts vertically downwards as the other side cuts vertically upwards. In the horizontal position, the greatest EMF is induced. In the vertical position, the sides of the coil are moving along the field lines or are parallel to it and as a result, they do not cut the field lines. The induced EMF is zero. Since the size of the coil change direction as they rotate, the voltage produces an alternating voltage. From the graph, uh, we see a sine wave portrayed. The greatest EMF is induced when the coil is horizontal because one side is cutting vertically upwards and the other side is cutting vertically downwards. But in the vertical position, because no field lines are cut, no EMF is induced. And that is what is shown. Here's a simple explanation of how the AC generator works. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, or a comment in the section below. See you in the next one.